Okay. So um, we've got two circuits here. Um, I've actually paused the animation. So when I close the circuit, nothing will happen because I've paused the animation. When I press play, you'll see the light bulbs are lighting up and the electrons are moving slowly around the circuit. So we need to get an idea of what some of these words mean. We're going to try to understand uh, three, um, three words. Um, hmm, four words? Uh, no, four words, yeah. So we want to try to understand charge. Um, let's use a... Let's use a different color for there because it's going to go against the black background. Charge, um, current, that will become apparent. That will become visible shortly. Um, voltage and resistance. I think that should, yeah. Okay. Let's see if I can move that around. So, yeah, those are the, those are the words we want to look at. Let me put them up there. Um, so we want to try to understand what those what those words mean. Um, <clears throat> so charge, well, we charge is something that uh, most scientists don't really know what it is. Or well, maybe no scientist knows knows what it is really. All we know is that some things have charge, some things don't have charge, and you can have um, you can have a positive or a negative charge, and if it's if the charges are identical, then they they repel one another, and if they're opposite, they attract one another. And that's basic. That's basically more or less what we all. That's all we really know about charge. Um, then, then current is how quickly charge flows. So the way it's the way it's written is it's uh, let's use the text tool. Um, current is the uh, rate. Let's change it back to. Use red rate of flow of charge. So that's current. Current is rate of flow of charge. How much charge flows by a particular uh, by a point every second? Okay. Now these electrons that are moving around the wire they carry charge. So um, they have, each one only has a tiny amount of charge. Um, but once you get enough of them together, then you can make and a whole coulomb of charge. A coulomb is the uh, is the unit of charge. So, if I take this um, this ammeter, which is an ammeter that couldn't really exist in the real world, but we're gonna sort of it's called a non-contact ammeter on this simulator, and I can hover it over the top of a wire, and it tells me that the, it's 0.45 amps. That means in every second. 0.45 coulombs of charge flows by that point right there. So I could get more, I could, the way I could increase the amount of charge to flow per second is by having more electrons flow by, like having the wire to be thicker, or I could just get the electrons to flow more quickly. And either, either way, the current would increase. So they use the word current because it's, it's similar to um, like water current and it's, the water model of electricity is the uh, one of the best models there is, um, as, as in um, it it um, it can be applied to so many different situations. Um, however, there are other models, such as the one I'm going to demonstrate in a moment is is cars. In fact, let's demonstrate that. Uh, no, I won't demonstrate that just yet. So you can also think of cars on a road. And so they could be electrons in a wire, could be the same as cars on the road. But the word current is used like water current. Anyway, so this means that there's 0.45 units of uh, coulombs of charge flowing by each second. That's what current is. So what about voltage? Voltage is the amount of energy each coulomb of charge has. Remember a coulomb is made up of millions of electrons. Each electron, how much does each electron have? How much charge does each electron have? Well, an, a charge of an electron, charge of one electron, um, is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 19. So an extremely small amount of charge. So you would have to have an extremely large amount of electrons to add up to one coulomb of charge. Once you've got that huge pile of electrons, 
Um, we want to know how uh, then, um, and we and we look at all those electrons and we say, how much energy does that collection of electrons have? That is essentially what voltage is, sort of, okay? Um, however, we never look at voltage directly. We, we never look at the, um, we never look at the, um, exactly the energy per charge. We look at the difference in energy per charge between two points. So that's why we always, that's why an ammeter is always done in series. So an ammeter is always measured in, is always connected in series. You always measure a current in series because it's just what's the current at that one point? How fast do, how much charge is flowing by that one point? A voltmeter is done in parallel because it's always the difference in charge between these two points, or we could say the difference in electrical potential energy between each point, which is why it's called potential difference. So potential difference is essentially another word for voltage. Okay, so the difference between energy between per charge between two points is measured with a voltmeter and it tells us 4.5 volts. So if I got enough electrons to make up one coulomb of charge, and I measured how much energy did these electrons have all together, then they would have 4.5 joules. So every coulomb has 4.5 joules. So 4.5 joules per coulomb, in other words. No, sorry, I've just backtracked a little bit there. The, the energy that it's lost between this point and that point is 4.5 joules per coulomb. We don't know how much energy it had before or how much energy it had afterwards, but certainly the amount that it is lost by going through this light bulb is 4.5 joules per coulomb. Okay, did that make, make sense? The amount of energy, the difference in energy per charge. Okay, so let's write that down. Um, so the voltage, voltage is the difference in energy per charge. Okay, which is why they call it which is why they say potential difference. It's actually, when I say difference in energy, more specifically, you, would, you, you could say it's the difference in p electrical potential energy per charge between two points. So that's why we measure voltage in parallel, because we need to measure before and afterwards. And we measure uh, current in series, because we just need to measure it at one point. So, um, <clears throat> so that's, um, so that's, Current, that's charge, current, and voltage. What about um, resistance? Well, clearly, if, if voltage is the amount of energy per charge and current is how quickly the charge is flowing, then obviously, if you give something more energy, it's going to move more quickly, right? That makes sense. And, and yeah, that's absolutely right. Generally speaking, generally speaking, um, we would say, we could say that the, the current is directly proportional to the voltage. When you give, when you give, so voltage member is the energy per charge. When you increase the amount of energy per charge, you increase the amount of, the amount of charge that flows by every second. So you, you're going to increase the current, you increase the speed at which the charge is flowing. That makes sense, but this doesn't happen always. The, um, when it does happen, when, when current and voltage is directly proportional, we say that the if it's like traveling through a wire, usually when it travels through a wire, current is directly proportional to voltage. We call that Ohm's law. So if something follows Ohm's law, then we would say it's um, the current. Well, if something, sorry, I should say the other way around. Really, if current is directly proportional to voltage, then we can say that um, it follows Ohm's law, or we could call it an ohmic conductor, an ohmic conductor. This word has been uh, used a lot more in the exams nowadays, um, and quite a few students are gone getting confused by it because they think, what the hell is an ohmic conductor? They know they're comfortable with the idea of Ohm's law, but when they hear this ohmic conductor phrase, they get very confused. But it just means an, a, con a, an, a conductor, a component, um, like a, a wire or a resistor that follows Ohm's law. Um, and so what is the constant that relates the two? If something's directly proportional to it, to something else, 
then there must be a constant that relates the two. So if we switch this around, we've got voltage is equal to some constant multiplied by, um, by I, by current. So it's got to be some constant, and that is resistance. Okay. Now, whether um, the it's an ohmic conductor or not, this formula will always work anyway. So it's not true to say that this formula is Ohm's law, but this relationship up here is Ohm's law. The reason being is that some things, this is not constant. So the resistance is not necessarily Not necessarily, I may have misspelled that. <laughs> Is it two L's? I can never remember. Not necessarily constant. <laughs> so, uh, one second, I'm just going to pause the video and close these shutters. So, so, the, so it's not necessarily constant, but whether it is or not, we can still relate, the, relate voltage, current and resistance with that formula. If it's constant, then we could then current would be directly proportional to voltage, um, and that would be that would mean it was following Ohm's law. But if it doesn't, if that doesn't follow that relationship because resistance is not constant, then it's um, then it doesn't follow Ohm's law. What do I mean by it not being constant? I mean that, for example, this light bulb here, as I increase the voltage, I would increase the current. But what happens is it heats up, and when it heats up, the resistance changes. The resistance is not constant. The resistance is not independent of the current or voltage. So, so a light bulb is not an ohmic conductor. A light bulb does not follow Ohm's law. Okay, so resistance is not constant. Um, so that those are, those are the basics then. Charge, current, voltage, and resistance. Let's just recap. Charge is just some, a property of some, some particles, like electrons and protons. Um, and, you can have, and you can have opposite charges. So you can have positive and negative charges. Opposites attract. Like charges repel, like, mag, like magnet poles, like magnetic poles. Um, Current is the rate of flow of charge, how much charge flows by every second. It's measured in ammeter, in amps. It's measured in series. Um, and it's, yeah, it's the amount of coulombs per second. So 0.45 amps means 0.45 coulombs, so, yeah, yeah, coulombs per second. Voltage is, um, is the energy per charge, so the amount of joules per coulomb. But we always measure it as in the difference between energy, between two points of energy per charge. So when I look at this voltmeter here, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about I'm measuring the amount of energy difference between before and after this light bulb. So it would have clearly have lost energy. If I were to take, if we imagine the black, um, black probe is before and the red one is after, and I do it the same with the battery, you'll be not surprised to see that the the, uh, the voltage actually that I'm reading is a negative value. We'll get back to why it's not 4.5, but it's 9 in a moment. You may already know. Um, but you can see it's a, it's a different it's a different value. We're getting a, we're getting a negative value. And that's because um, what I was measuring with the black before and the red afterwards would be the loss of how much the energy is going down and because this time it's going up because I'm giving it energy I'm going to get a negative value I could obviously do it the other way around get the red before and afterwards now I could say um, the red before the black afterwards is measuring the increase in energy so when I per charge that is when I when I arrange it like this I get a negative 4.5 so that's voltage resistance is the relationship between voltage and current um, if you have a higher resistance, then um, the uh, the current will ne won't, ne won't necessarily be as high for the same voltage. So we could we could draw a we could briefly draw um, maybe a graph here. I'll clear the screen in a moment. And we'll have a look more. That's a bit messy. I'll look more series and parallel circuits. 
let's imagine I uh, changed um, a, a varying voltage with current and I plotted what was the current for that voltage, what was the current for this voltage. So I went from zero to say five volts or something and I ended up getting a straight line like that. First of all, start, I can say, therefore, it's following Ohm's law because they're directly proportional. Um, if I did a second one and I got a line like that and a third one and I got a line like that and we got A, B, C, let's say they're all resistors, which one would have the highest resistance and which one would have the lowest resistance? So um, if we look at the equation on the right-hand side, V equals I R, and rearrange it, uh, we would see that resistance is equal to V over I. So if we have a large voltage um, divided by a small current, then that would be um, a high resistance, right? That would mean that C has the highest resistance because we can see as, as we're going along here, the change in current has been quite, uh, quite small, whereas the change in voltage has been quite large. Another way you can think about it, you can ignore that um, equation there for a moment and just think, despite for C, despite the fact I've been given a lot of voltage, I'm not actually increasing the current by that great greater amount. And so therefore it must have quite a high resistance because it's quite hard for current to flow through that component. So C has got the highest resistance. Um, Obviously, it depends what you plot and what axes. If I, if I switch these axes around, if I put I, I on the um, x-axis and V on the y-axis, then you'd have um, C, C and B would swap. Uh, sorry, C and A would swap. So that's, um, so that's a summary of charge, current, voltage, and resistance. So I'll stop the video there, and then the next video I'll do is going to be looking at resistors and series and resistors in parallel, and also measuring voltage and current in series and parallel, okay? Right.